Hey, what's going on guys? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about the upgrades that I've done to my Arsenal SLR 107. And man, let me tell you, it's been a year since I purchased this rifle. And I was really surprised at the awesome deal that I was able to get on this rifle. I've got a video on that if you guys are interested in the background and the history of how I ended up with that rifle. I'll have a card at the end if you guys are interested. But before we get into the video, what are your favorite AK upgrades? Sound off in the comment section and let me know to see if your favorites are the ones that I've done with this rifle. In addition to that, if you guys are not following me on Instagram, I'd encourage you guys to swing on by Instagram if you guys are on the platform and follow me there because you get to see a lot of the background stuff with the channel over there. I'm posting almost every single day and you guys can kind of get a heads up on some of the projects that I'm working on and uh, so on and so forth. So swing on by and check that out. Finally, if you guys are interested, I am being sponsored by Coffee Brand Coffee Company. I know that sounds kind of like <laughs> pretty lame name for a company uh, for coffee, but uh, the great thing about them is they are apolitical. Uh, they, they don't care about politics at all. Uh, we've heard a lot of controversy with like Starbucks and Black Rifle Coffee Company and all that stuff. Uh, they're not getting involved in any of that type of stuff. They just want to provide you guys with the best coffee, tea, and hot cocoa available on the market and do so at a fair price. If you guys are interested in doing so, uh, there is a link in the pinned comment uh, to check them out. And that's all I'm asking for you guys to do. Swing on by, check them out, read the reviews to see what you guys think, and then maybe pick some coffee up if you're interested in supporting them. I would appreciate it. Okay, so let's get back into the video and talk about these upgrades on this AK. Man, let me tell you, it's been a year and it, it's been quite the ride because adding all the different types of upgrades on this rifle has really taught me a lot about the AK platform. Not only how to fit upgrades to your rifle because there is fitting involved in especially the hand guards uh, for, uh, for this arsenal. 107R, but also, you know, I upgraded the trigger as well and understanding how to, you know, uninstall and reinstall a new trigger is pretty awesome as well. Okay, so let's go uh, GT style, tip the butt, and uh, talk about all the different upgrades that we've got going on here. Uh, first and foremost, let's go ahead and clear the rifle. There you go. And we're clear. All right, so this came with a two chamber uh, Midwest Industries brake. Um, the SLR 107s are going to be a left hand uh, one or 14 by one left handed thread uh, muzzle. So it, you got this uh, brake from Midwest Industries. It came with the rifle and it has done very well. I, I have no reason to change this out. So I have liked it uh, a lot and kept it on there. So there's that. I might change this out later and put some type of uh, chemo uh, muzzle device on here so that I can add my uh, Dead Air Sandman S. Um, but I do want to check the consistency of the barrel first to make sure that it's all good to go and then uh, make a decision about that later. Okay, moving on back, we've got the B31 and the B10 handguards here uh, with the RK6 foregrip and then a pick section on the side here. Originally, I was going to put a pursed. IR device on the side here, but unfortunately when I ordered it got it got lost in the mail and I had to ask for a refund. Fortunately enough, I was able to get a refund. That's awesome, but uh, unfortunately I don't have a purse anymore. So yeah, there's that. The great thing about the B31 upper hand guards is you're going to have pick sections on the front and rear. So if you want to put a uh, red dot up here, you can do that. Now, a lot of people will say you don't want to put a red dot up here because uh, the heat from the gas tube is going to um, overheat your electronics in the red dot and it could either kill it or it could diminish its lung longevity 
longevity, if I could say that word. And with the way that this is set up, you really don't have to worry about that because the B31 is not actually in direct contact with the gas block. Now, there will be some heat, definitely, but not as bad as say like an Ultimac or one of the Midwest Industries pick section gas tubes. So just keep that in mind. And then you also have some uh, area up here forward of the um, lower handguard retaining bracket that allows you to put maybe a flashlight or something if you wanted to do that. Now, I put the RK6 um, hand or foregrip up here uh, in front of that retaining bracket because I really like the ability to pull this into, uh, into my shoulder with as much of a straight arm as possible. So I'm engaging my lat instead of my bicep. And uh, if you guys don't already know, your lats are stronger than your biceps. So there's that. Now I will say that getting the lower handguard, the B10, uh, handguard onto this rifle took a lot of fitting, a lot of time with a Dremel, uh, basically shaving off the section that fits into the receiver, but it really wasn't that difficult. I just took my time, took some off, fitted it, see if it would um, lock into place. If it didn't, went back to the Dremel, shaved some more off, and just slowly did that. It's time consuming, but it's super easy, especially if you have a Dremel. Um, and it, if I can do it, you guys can do it. So there's that. Okay, moving back, we have the PT5 buttstock, and this is something I really do like. The SLR-107R is the fixed stock version of the 107 rifle. And uh, the thing about the PT5 is this turns it into a folding stock rifle. And that is super cool because I don't have much room in my safe as it is. So being able to um, reduce the size of this rifle to fit it into the safe or put it into my truck is a huge help. In addition to that, with it being folded, I can fold it with the optic on and it will lock into place. Uh, like so. You have a button up here that you just depress and it will unfold and lock into position. In addition to that, this is telescoping and you have the ability to adjust this piece here for your comb. So every time that you pull up on your rifle, you can be sure you're going to be right behind your red dot each and every single time or your iron sights, depending on how you run it. So that's something I really, really did like. From there, I upgraded the trigger and I am naturally running an ALG AKT. And this thing is night and day different from the trigger set that was in this rifle to begin with. Uh, prior to this trigger upgrade, I had the FIME trigger set in here or the FIME fire control group, whatever you want to call it. And um, it was fine. It was a little bit better than a stock AK trigger, but not like tons better, if that makes any sense. With this, it really does change it. Moving the pull weight from anywhere between four and five pounds down to below three. That was a huge change. And if you're gonna run an AK for competitions or something like that, I'm definitely gonna want an ALG trigger in there as well. So here is your, here's what it's like to pull it. It is super, super light and will uh, break really, really easy. Here's your reset and then there it is again. Man, this trigger, I don't know why it took me so long to put one in, but once it's in, it's been golden. Finally, with the optic here, I am running a Midwest Industries side mount with the uh, integrated mounting system for the ACSS Cyclops. This is going to be the one power uh, prism 
optic and this is the gen 1 as well so uh, i like it I, i'm okay with it being the gen 1 it, i don't necessarily need the newer generations and i do like how it is set up to be able to directly attach to the uh, side mount as well this is going to have an etched reticle and the bdc in it is uh, extremely versatile because it will accommodate 762 by 39 556 545 by 39 and 300 blackout all with the same reticle. Now you're gonna make some adjustments on your uh, point of aim, point of impact, as far as uh, zeroing this optic, and your holdovers are going to be uh, slightly different ranges, but by and large, it's all going to be about the same distances on your BDC, so that was really cool. Finally down here, uh, I've got this new pistol grip, and this is actually from a company I would have never expected a AK pistol grip to come from, and that's going to be Mission First Tactical. Uh, one of the guys over there sent me a email and asked if I was interested in checking any of their stuff out. I uh, requested four different items, some of their AR-15 magazines, a uh, AR-15 pistol grip, this pistol grip, and then one of their backpacks as well. I'm gonna have a separate video on those things later, but this is actually pretty interesting. Typically I run the standard AK grip on here because I do like the smaller grips, but this one is a little bit larger and fills my hand a little bit better as well. If you guys aren't interested in the finger grooves, that may not be for you, but it actually feels pretty good, pretty comfortable, and I like the texturing on here as well. The pistol grip is going to come with its own bolt that is compatible with the uh, pistol grip block that's in there and it's going to be a lot shorter as well because on the underside you have the ability for some storage in here to put batteries or um, whatever you want to put in there. Skittles, you know, you always gotta have food out at the range. But it comes with this little divider for you to uh, divide up your uh, batteries if you're running double A's or triple A's or whatever the case may be, you can do that. So uh, really thought out design on this pistol grip and I have enjoyed running it so far. So there you guys go, there is the upgrades on this rifle. And let me tell you, I would really like to run this at Kalash Bash, but unfortunately I've decided to run my SAM-5. I've got some additional upgrades on that rifle as well we're gonna talk about in a video here real soon. Just gotta get it out to the range, do some fine tuning, and then get some video of me competing with it with one of the local competitions, but I digress. Look at this thing. Man, that is a gorgeous rifle. Really, really do like that. But let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comment section down below. If you were able to get your hands on some Zenico stuff, would you trick out your AK with Zenico furniture? Or what is your favorite? Let me know. Sound off in the comment section down below. Really do appreciate you guys swinging by and checking things out. If you guys are interested in the Fit and Fire Spam Can shirt, you can check that out over at Ballistic Inc. I would really appreciate it and provide you guys with something that you might like as well. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thanks so much for swinging by and checking things out. As always, I would encourage you guys to subscribe to the channel, give me the likes, the shares, the comments, all that jazz. It is a huge help along the way. Thanks guys, we'll catch you guys later. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five, catch you guys later.